comments on what we do and right. uh, yeah exactly scary. so yeah we're gonna be talking about auditions today so and other various questions too that'll be one of our topics is auditioning because it's audition season for a lot of high school people and also um for entrance exams for getting into an orchestra and stuff like that in different uh, conservatories so uh, i know you did three uh recordings this month with uh for most um u.s um band all state i guess yeah there were three studies that were required yes and so i recorded them because we thought it would be helpful for our community so yeah i hope it was but yeah it's cool to have different versions i guess there were other ones as well but mm -hmm. it's always cool because it can give you ideas and yeah weird so we have nobody in the chat i think we should <laughs> hold on maybe we have some technical difficulties here you're watching please let us know oh chicken yeah there are people that's good <laughs> sometimes we have these glitches and it happens so yeah um to audition so we have some questions i asked people uh on um youtube and also on instagram about auditioning and like a lot of people have um well one person in particular was talking about anxiety claudia she wanted to know do you have any tips on audition anxiety okay well um yeah yes and no because it's uh okay so you have anxiety about the audition like it's normal first thing it's normal to have anxiety uh, because it is a stressful thing so sometimes when we try to fight emotions it doesn't really work right. you kind of have to accept that it's a stressful event but then if you want to uh, visualize your stress as maybe it's in a basket and you have all that stress in the basket Every time you practice, you can empty the basket a little bit because you're ready. You're getting yourself ready for mm -hmm. it. And then if you do a mock audition, then you're getting more used to it. Like, let's say you were doing an audition every week. After a while, you'll get, you would get used to it. You'd, you'd be less stressed about it. Mm -hmm. But because you do it maybe once a year, it's, you know, it's something. And it's something that you put a lot of weight on. So... Um, when you prepare well, it helps. But also, there's things that you control and things that you don't control in this situation. Mm. Maybe try to identify what you do control and let go of what you don't. Like, uh, don't focus too much on the result because the result, you don't really control. There's going to be judges choosing. Mm -hmm. But you can control on how you prepare. And also, I would say, don't identify too much with the result either. Mm -hmm. Because it's just one time you played in front of people. It doesn't um, make, it doesn't uh, have anything to do with who you are, mm -hmm. your talent. or So you just do your best, you know. You prepare the best you can. Mm -hmm. You play the best you can. If you do have a setback, it's just a setback. Like all the greatest People who achieved the greatest mm -hmm. things, they always say that they've had a lot of, uh, of um, I just have the French word in my head, uh, échec, you know, a lot of, um, like I'd say setbacks. Setbacks, yeah, setbacks is good, yeah. You know, but the thing is how you get up from them, mm -hmm. you know, but you, you might also win first place in the audition. Yep, exactly. But you don't, like, don't identify too much with it and just prepare as best as you mm -hmm. can and i would say there's two ways when you prepare there's learning and there's doing mock editions and do a couple and if you have no one to sit there and listen to you just record yourself and that's going to be stressful enough and you don't stop you do as if it was a real thing yeah first time hmm. it will be tough because you'll want to stop to correct things but mm -hmm. no you don't you do the whole thing then you can listen to it Mm -hmm. you might even realize some things are better than you thought they were you also have to acknowledge a good stuff not yeah, just the bad to, stuff because yeah. when we look at ourselves we tend to be harder than when we look at others mm -hmm. and then um yeah be nice to yourself mm -hmm. because like mm -hmm. you're very courageous to do it and that's how mm -hmm. you should see it like mm -hmm. it's a growth experience mm -hmm. totally sometimes you win sometimes you don't but you're always growing out of it right if exactly. you take it the right way mm -hmm um what else is there there's a lot of questions but we'll try to run through a bunch of them and then we have a new segment which we'll talk about later which is gonna be cool but uh how much time uh how much practice time does it take to learn a piece for an audition or a concert well 
those are two big different things. An audition is like a couple little things usually, and then, and then a concert's like a concert whole... takes can take for a long can take a long time. You know, some people can do it very quickly. Some people can do it very. It depends on so many factors. Yeah, so many factors. Too. Yeah, because like if I'm learning tonal music, so music that's uh, maybe you know like mm -hmm. that I use scales and arpeggios and stuff like that that I already know. It's gonna probably be a bit faster than if I learn something super contemporary mm -hmm. with a lot of effects mm -hmm. and like my brain will require a little bit more time than mm -hmm. if I'm like oh that's a D major scale and that's a yeah you know mm -hmm. so it depends on the repertoire exactly. it depends on your level as yep. a first time I had to prepare a whole concert mm -hmm. an hour concert was at the end of my bachelor's degree and took me a year you know to yeah. prepare the whole thing sure. and Yeah, and for auditions, it's uh, different too because sometimes every cycle they pick different pieces. So you're not you're not gonna learn four or five different things and be like, oh, I have this for the next five years. It's always gonna be the same thing. Sometimes they change it, so you have to know well in advance. Try to find out on the day of that they announce it. Find out when that day is, and then start learning those things. You might be lucky and you've already learned some of them before, so you just have to kind of re yeah. put them back, rehash them up. Because the excerpts, yeah. there's some you might know, yeah. and you're just Yeah. Re preparing them exactly yeah and so like, it depends a lot depends a lot so you know uh i would just advise just like go in go into one of those things try it out the first time is always going to be longer the second time usually is going to be shorter for yeah. the next cycle that you learn things and like the time you have try to just uh <laughs> organize it well like mm -hmm. start with the toughest stuff because that's what your brain will require the most time to uh mm -hmm. to learn really so yeah. I would start with the most difficult things. There you go. And that uh, goes into this question, funny enough. Kunish wants to know, does an audition piece necessarily have to be super difficult and virtuosic? Not necessarily. Um, not necessarily. Sometimes it's uh, a couple of excerpts that don't advise you to be virtuosic, but to actually play like you're blending in with other instruments while the instruments are not even there. But I think maybe the question she means, um, I think that she means sometimes you have a, piece that you choose right for the audition mm -hmm. and um maybe she wants to know it could be that yeah if you have to choose Damn. a piece that virtual so that's yeah. very fast and i would say like usually people want to hear a little bit of everything like mm -hmm. if you have something that's that has a little bit of speed but also like phrasing mm -hmm. and musicality but the most important is something that you control and that totally. you can play well yep because uh Nothing is easy per se, like to play it well. Mm -hmm. Like when we learn, it's funny because we have levels for pieces, you know, oh, that's a level one and mm -hmm. that's a level two piece and that's a level. But once you're a professional, you don't care about those things anymore because you can play pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. But you still see all that music on the same level of mm -hmm. respect and yep. of musicality. And so... Maybe, like, I don't know yeah. if that answers the question. Yeah, hopefully it answers it, yeah. Something that you can play well, yeah, I would exactly. say. You know? Yeah, exactly. And that you're confident in, that shows rhythm, because that's the most important thing that they listen to is a good yeah. self of rhythm. If you don't have that, they kind of deduct a lot from people. Um, referring to the pulse. Yeah, referring to the pulse and stuff, super important. Yeah. And, like, But play there's naturally also a too. lot of <laughs> pieces, like, when you pick a piece, if your teacher is good, they're going to, try to find something some pieces are not that tough but right. sound very difficult mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. some pieces are very difficult but don't sound that difficult right. so if you're auditioning you might want to choose what's mm -hmm. advantaging you yeah you know there's some show pieces that are not that tough yeah it's true uh julia wants to know how do you how do i make my sound more stronger and more audible in a large concert hall So I guess like say you're auditioning as well. That could be something like that or in a concert setting. Like how do you project, you know? We've talked about that in the past in this mm -hmm. previous podcast about projection and stuff like that. And I've I've heard like James Galloway from, you know, hundreds of meters away in a gigantic concert hall. And he sounded amazing in the very back. You know what I mean? So and when I've known I knew somebody who was sitting in the front near the front row and his sound was very, very loud and, uh, but very beautiful, but loud and stuff like that. So that, that energy from where he is, that little guy can project that out there. You have to have lots of energy inside that's within a controlled sense. Like it's not like blatantly like, you know, like a trombone playing super loud and all that stuff. There's a lot of control in his playing 
but I, he said he was playing very loud all the time. Even his pianissimos were loud, but pianissimo, if that makes sense. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because uh, dynamics sometimes have more to do with tim- timber. 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 It's always difficult for yeah. me. Uh, with timber than, uh, than with the level of uh, decibels. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, sometimes when your sound doesn't project enough, it's because you um, you cover the yeah. embouchure hole a little bit too much. So try to keep it uncovered. Mm-hmm. If the distance between your upper lip and the, the lip plate of the flute is not big enough, you're not going to have a sound that projects. You need some edge there. See, that's you pretty important there. That's a, good, that's a good point, yeah. And then there's the, there's the air speed and mm-hmm. the, the, the air support that you get with the... The whole mid s- mid yes. of your body, mid section, yeah, your totally. core. <laughs> you <laughs> your know, core. you need to use your core. But like, it's not just the front; it's the front, the sides, the back, mm-hmm. like everything <sighs> working together, and not just the belly, but also the the rib cage. Um, so yeah, but check your embouchure. Don't cover more than a third to a fourth of it with your lower lip, and don't bring your upper lip forward because if you do then the distance between your upper lip and mm-hmm. the lip plate on the other side is closer and you want to get it get some distance there to mm-hmm. get a some edge in your sound right so yeah if you guys have audition questions um for us to look at definitely and you're listening on the podcast or if you're watching this later leave it down in the comments we'll start we'll do another episode or do a video about auditioning and answer those questions as well but yeah uh, i saw a couple questions in the chat we'll answer some questions now then and i saw somebody say um intermediate pieces and it was elijah elijah wants to know are there any pieces that you would recommend to an intermediate flutist so if we take intermediate as like you know grade four to grade eight i guess like that would be a solid okay. inter a solid intermediate flute player because like an intermediate flute player from texas is an amazing flutist you know or if you're in different places in different yeah, states it's all pretty high, high. Yeah. yeah so people have a different range of intermediate but i think that's a safe range yeah um i think vivaldi concertos oh, yeah. especially I, I love the il cardellino you know that mm-hmm. uh, that's a showpiece and that's not that hard like it's mm-hmm. in d major and you need to it's fun. know double tonguing yeah. and then it's fun and it sounds good. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not like and it's good to put and it's actually pretty cool to put together because it's like very ensemble like. Yeah. And there's parts where like it's yeah, like you say, mm-hmm. like the, the orchestra or piano. Yeah. Goes helps. Like, does one part, then it's mm-hmm. your turn. Like yeah. it's really like call to an answer type of stuff. Yeah. Like, and not too complicated because my recommendation would have been like Poulenc because that's like something that high schoolers that's play bit, all the time. That's but that's a bit like more advanced. I would. I, I would, would say. S- I would say that would be like if you want to push yourself. That's like that push yourself piece. I no, guess. That's, that's no, that's more advanced. I yeah. think. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's just funny because like in high school it's always first movement Poulenc if it's something modern like something yeah. from. And then like Griffith's poem, high schoolers play that thing like nothing. That's like a thing yeah. that high schoolers play. Yeah. But I don't see it as a. I, uh, it's more advanced, but because you have an advanced high schoolers mm-hmm. too. Yeah. For me, like intermediate is uh, like you said, a bit Vivaldi. easier than that. Yeah. Like yeah. Vivaldi, maybe some Bach sonatas. Because yeah. we're trying to pick some Bach stuff son- that you can find pretty yeah. easily, right? Bach sonatas, it depends hmm. on which ones because yeah, they're pretty tough for the breathing. Oh, Handel sonatas are Handel a little bit easier. Handel sonatas are, yeah. But they're still they're good so though. And they're so beautiful. Yeah. And um, in the French book, there's one that I remember when I played it. I was like, this one is pretty realistic. Was it the Perilou? The yep, Perilou fairly, ballad? Yeah, yeah a lot like of people don't play in, it though. I think it's in B but it's good though. or something like that. It was just going in the fingers mm-hmm. pretty well. Yeah. I was like, wow, that sounds tough, but it's not a, that tough. Um, yeah. But like yeah, intermediate. You see, we don't even agree on on what intermediate yeah, is. Yeah, because so it's really yeah. it's a bit wide for, uh, yeah, it's a wide question. So but yeah, there's a couple there. Vivaldi's a really good starting point. Vivaldi, I love Vivaldi. Yeah. a lot of uh, Baroque concertos like that. Mm-hmm. They're so beautiful, like Quants and Stamets. And, okay. Uh, yeah. I think they're interesting. You said Stamets? Yeah, Stamets, Stamets is very good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. Um, yeah, and the more modern stuff, maybe uh, you can play syrinx. Yep. You can play um, La Danse de la Chèvre from yep. Onegur. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. If you go on, um, you know, some some schools or some schools that do exams, you know, for uh, different levels, you'll see lists of uh, 
they have websites like the Royal mm -hmm. Conservatory. Mm -hmm. They have websites and there you can find the requirements and they have pieces for different levels. Right. It might give you ideas. Yeah. Then you can cross reference on YouTube and find versions mm -hmm. see if you like mm -hmm. the piece. Exactly. So, and then we have one more question, then we'll go to our new segment. That's going to be cool. Uh, DIY Adam Odoran. So hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, how do I make sure my tongue is prepared before I play a fast etude without tonguing before I start? So I guess... Okay, so yeah. you're starting right away. Yeah. Tuku, tuku, tuku. yeah. Okay. So what <laughs> I do personally is I put my tongue where it should be because we oh. tend to think that tonguing is, putting the is when the tongue comes forward. But tonguing really the sound is when the tongue goes back. Mm -hmm. So I put my tongue there just where like at the where the teeth and the roof of the mouth meet. I put the tip of my tongue there and then the air is in the back already. And then I just release my tongue. Go, you know, but it, the sound that you hear that. It's yeah. not my tongue going forward. It's my tongue going back. Right. Since I started doing that, it changed my life. Mm. It took me, I think, 20 years to figure mm. that one out because no well, one had um, told me mm. to do that. I just... That'd be a cool video to do. <laughs> That's a good, interesting thing. <laughs> yeah. There, I don't know why no one had told me. Right. I guess they thought I knew. <laughs> I think I yep. read that somewhere and then I was like, oh, I'll mm. try that. Nice. Huh. And uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. That's so good because I was reading that. I was like, wow. Like, you never think about that, but it's so important, you know, like the that realization. Be like, oh, it changed my changed tongue tonguing. completely. Yeah. It made it so much so much easier, mm -hmm. especially a first note. Totally. So we're gonna do a new segment. It's gonna, or we've never had segments really before, but we're gonna try something new, and it's called like, what's the flute or what the flute? So like, it's kind of like the weird and the amazing that we find online of the flute and okay. we kind of like just understand. And it was that thing with the KSI. I don't know. He's a musician and youtuber and stuff and he referenced you yesterday or it would actually be two days ago two on friday ago, yeah. on his show on his second channel and you were right at the beginning and he wanted to he bought his new e-star flute the one that we reviewed uh, a while ago um and then he wrote then he online, wrote yeah how, how to, to flute, flute. <laughs> yeah how to flute and you showed up and he watched your i think how to get a clear sound out of uh how to get a clear sound out of the flute yeah, it's a bit sad because yeah the algorithm didn't give him the right video cause no there I, were a couple videos we have videos for beginners yeah the that, first flute lesson one yeah but that, that wasn't really a video for beginners so he was like what is the she clear talking flute about? one the clear the clear sound one not the not the first flute lesson one first flute lesson one is good no no yeah, i mean yeah. the, the video that he watched yes that's right was not really for beginners no it wasn't yeah so I was like, that's not going to be very helpful no, for no, him no. because he doesn't even know anything yeah, yet. Yeah. And I'm talking about a clear sound. Right. So I was a bit sad about that, but it's just the algorithm. Right, made exactly, a exactly. But we have and, his, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. But we have his clip. And just uh, keep in mind, uh, there is just a little bit of uh, swearing in it at the beginning. But uh, Emily, you look at it because I, I made a little clip of actually the, sec the, the part that he actually played. Okay. Okay. And it's only a few seconds long. Okay. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh my god. Oh. You see that hand position though? Wow. That hand position's okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. So that's it. You can't freeze frame it, but you can go to the original video and uh, check it out. But like, he moves his hand. I don't know if you want to grab your flute, but do don't play backwards on your flute. But what did you think about that? Is it is it like. Well, I was impressed because yeah. he plays backwards and he still makes a sound. I don't know if I can do that. No, I'll no, try. no. And like, we can't really see the fingers. But I can do oh, it, yeah. yeah. And then like, yeah. his hands were... Can't see it on the screen. Oh, everything but, yeah. was backwards, but okay. Like, he yeah. just has to go back on the other side. The other side, side. exactly. Yeah. But yeah. His right hand position was really good, but that hand's actually supposed to be on the other side. So yeah, like we'll see. Like he can see potential. It's yeah. just he needs to put his flute on the other side. Yeah. But yeah, I would love to give him a little lesson on, the <laughs> yeah. on that. So yeah. To like, help him. Yeah. Or he can watch the real beginner video. Yeah, yeah. The real <laughs> beginner video, which is like, I think even the trailer video for our channel. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. And but I know... Yeah, yeah, it was kind of funny. Was, uh, funny. Yeah, it was that funny was to see that. And I was like, whoa, what's this? It's pretty funny. Yeah, and he's a musician. Hopefully... Like, it'd be cool if you learned another instrument because I, 
why not add it to his repertoire of, uh, of music flute in his music in his rap yeah. music yeah so flute is amazing yeah so that's what the flute that's a new segment <laughs> we're calling it <laughs> that's a so if you guys have something like that to share with us either on instagram share with us on uh, youtube with a link of something that is a bit strange or something wonderful about flute like if you know a wonderful player that's played something super cool send it to us and we'll definitely do that uh, more so yeah that's what's the flute so um now we'll go back to questions a couple more questions and then we will uh call it a day but what the flute yeah that's right odyssey it's essentially uh, yeah <laughs> Rock, yeah there you go yeah what the flute it's a good one i think we'll think of new ones if you guys have ideas for uh for uh new s segments for us let us know too you yeah. know that's pretty cool uh sarah celine i think wrote something here she's like how do i get better at fast passages okay in general yeah. in general i would say um <coughs> practice um scales or technical exercises mm -hmm. that you repeat a lot mm -hmm. because like if you want your fingers to move fast in a certain uh, setting like in a certain uh, right. sequence you just have to do it often enough so that you don't really have to think about mm -hmm. it anymore so like let's say in uh, Tafanel and Gobert the daily exercises you mm -hmm. do EJ1 you pick one page and you work on that page for a whole week mm -hmm. until it gets easy. And mm -hmm. then you go, or even two lines, just two lines, and mm -hmm. you repeat them, mm -hmm. you know. And there are studies that show that, uh, let's say, practicing 30 minutes in a row something is not as efficient as practicing it, stopping, going back, stopping, okay. going back. Mm -hmm. Because, like, forgetting and coming back to it is really what makes it super strong in your brain. Right. So, um, but like 30 minutes is not exaggerated, but you know what I mean? Like yep. it's, it's good to go back to the exercise, not just do it once. So there's that. And then there's also a lot to do about uh, your posture, because if your fingers are holding your flute, if they're busy mm -hmm. holding the flute, because the flute is not in, right. in a good uh, balance, then uh, your flute will tilt. Your fingers will be busy keeping the yeah, flute up keeping flute and then up. they won't be free to move. Or if you're, you know, if you have a bad posture uh -huh. and that kind of constricts your movements or, um, yeah, those types of things. Mm. And then you can use rotation, other little things like that. We have videos about how to play faster. Yep. So maybe watch that. But yeah, like practicing and with technique, I think that sometimes less is more. Uh -huh. You don't need to do 20 different exercises no. at once. Like pick one practice it get fast at this one mm -hmm. you don't need that many you no. know it's better true. to pick something and really practice it a lot yep and like yeah technical group bear is good for that because they kind of back then they analyzed like those guys saw what most music played is like whatever's being played they put these exercises so that you can play all those things from 200 yeah. 100 years ago like because composers write like that. They write with repetitive stuff. They, they write do stuff. with the scales, the yeah. scales and thirds, the arpeggios. If yeah. you know those things, your scales, yeah. scales and thirds and arpeggios, you know pretty about much About 90%, everything. yeah. And then do studies. Like one study a mm -hmm. week or one study every two weeks, it's a pretty good thing to do. You it's know, the it purpose, works, yeah. It works on everything. It yeah. works on the technique and on the musicality yeah. and the articulation all at once. And yeah. It, Every student yeah. I have, I had one student who didn't want to do studies mm -hmm. for years. And then I said, let's try. And yeah. she got better so fast with the studies. She was like, that's right. amazing. Why did I want to do it for mm -hmm. like, it's just life. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't ready. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I know a lot of people like are like that. And they kind of even treat studies like, yeah, like it, it really does help if you do it like once a week and just it brings you more. If you're doing it by yourself, if you're learning flute by yourself in general, uh, studies are a good teacher for you, you know, yeah. because you're investigating in this thing. You're, it's like reading a short story every week. You're learning something new. And and you don't need to make it perfect. It's really, a, it's just a study. Yeah, you it's know, just it a study. It doesn't need to it's, be it's completely disposable, perfect. In fact. It's disposable, in you fact. Play yeah. it, you play it your best, and then you learn a new one. Yeah. Because the point is not to stay on it for too long. So yeah. if you do have to stay on it for too long, then maybe it's a bit too difficult for right. you. Just pick something easier and learn more of them and build yeah. build up from there. And then you'll go back to yeah. that level of study. You know, I, I prefer to do a bit easier and do one a week than have to keep it for a month. Exactly. Like analyze it for that week. Have fun with it. Do things that you might not necessarily would do for the study you did before you know all those types of things are pretty important 
and uh is like probably the one thing i would encourage besides the scales and stuff like that if you're learning by yourself studies and all your scales and arpeggios because you in you studies good, you're gonna put all those things into practice yeah. in a way you know yeah and that helps you with your sight reading like sight reading is about reading every day yeah something so new if you so learn that you're something new every week mm -hmm. it's uh but pieces you can keep for longer you can keep for three months if you want a year if you want a piece you know but studies mm -hmm, change mm -hmm. ah another question here happy sunrise what do you think about the austin hour all right austin sammer family mm -hmm. ernst austin farmer was in vienna philharmonic and now his son andras is in berlin phil and the other son is in vienna phil i love them but i feel like i have no choice chance chance for what Like to get into those orchestras because a family of flutists are in two different orchestras. Let us know, because <laughs> that's interesting. I don't even know who they are. I know the guy from. Yeah. I know the guy from Vienna Phil, but, anyways, let's uh, I, let us know I, I don't more know much about that. Yeah, that the orchestra world is a uh, is a. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of things going on in different places. So, but like no like chance, orchestra chances like, and audition. Oh, that makes. Yeah, I don't know. Like. I see. Um. If you want to play in an orchestra, you have to be willing to move, I guess. Yeah. Like, you have to go where the Opportunity jobs are. Is, yeah. So if you are willing to do that and you're working hard towards mm -hmm. that goal, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you have a chance? Like It all yeah. depends on what you're willing to uh, you don't do know. to get there. Yeah. Like, you don't it, know unless you try as well, too. Yeah. You know, your self-propelling pops. Sometimes yeah. along the way, you realize... Sometimes you get to that and you're like, yes, that was my dream mm -hmm. and I'm happy. And sometimes you say you know what, I'm going to switch dreams because that's not really making me happy. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. fine too. Mm -hmm. like <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, you know, yeah, just try, you know, like the feeling like you have no chance in auditions, that's a normal feeling, but you also shouldn't have the feeling that you prepared yourself, you're ready to do this and do But in audition. a way, like you should try to, like, I don't know how to say that because you can't not feel a way, like if you feel that way, you feel that way. But I know it's normal. Like, though, but but yeah. in a way, if you go to an audition and you're like, Oh, I don't have a chance. Like you've seen a lot of people winning in the Olympics, yeah. coming with an attitude of "Oh, I have no chance of winning." No, like, yeah. Y you have to kind of pump yourself yeah, up you, a little you, bit. You, you're at that ability level. If you're, you have to under, you have to know that you're at this door because you practice so much. Like, yeah, no yeah. Olympian has walked onto the the thing saying, so, like, "I'm." So, like, it's uh, normal, yes and no, in the sense that. Yes, but people who do win, I think they don't think like that. No, like you have to maybe. switch your mindset if yeah. you want to win, and you're not gonna win if you come in thinking I'm not gonna win this. I'm not gonna win no, this. No, no, no. Like, like you have to have this. Uh, so you yeah, have to work on that. If that's it. your mindset, you have to work on changing that. Yeah. Um. You know, there's good books about uh, psych um, sports psychology, yeah. and sports psychology is really so close to what we do when we yeah. audition when we play in concert. Uh, so like first one that's super tiny and it's not really sports psychology yeah. but it's uh, the inner game of tennis it's an old book but it's really good and then after that there's um, in pursuit of excellence mm -hmm. it's a psychologist who wrote that it's pretty good like you can really find good books about yeah. that or just consult a sports psychologist totally. or a performance psychologist someone who's because like you have to switch that if you want to yeah. win yeah and also like just Learn, take what you can out of those th out of those books, out of that those opportunities you get, and turn it into positive things. You don't have to take everything because I knew people who are always like game time go, you know, in the audition line and like they're so pumped but they never win. So I mean, but you know, usually what what they say in sports psychology, what I understood from what I read and all that mm -hmm. stuff is that if you focus about the goal, which you don't really yes. have control over because you don't control how other people will play, you don't control how people will perceive you mm -hmm. the judges all that your energy is not in the right place right. so right. you probably won't win mm -hmm. if you're just pumped i'm yeah, gonna yeah, win yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. so great and but you're not thinking about your notes about breathing yeah. about your posture about all the important things what is about things. to happen yeah. so it's about don't focus about mm -hmm. this family or don't focus yeah. about focus yeah. on what you control what you can do totally S you know moving your mm -hmm. fingers blowing in mm -hmm. your flute tonguing mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. types of things yeah that's what you control yeah. if you're not focusing on that you're focusing on if you're focusing on something else you're not focusing on that mm -hmm. and that's what makes you lose yeah. it's not the other people right. you know yeah yeah there you yeah. go so hopefully that helps that's uh there's a whole thing about that you know um ivy panda wants to know do you know any warm-ups so i could hold notes longer okay 
Oh, there's some good questions coming well, up too. Well, you can do Great. some, uh, yeah, some breathing exercises. Like uh, one that I love is uh, empty your lungs completely. And mm -hmm. when you think it's empty, you continue to push. I like, go, <laughs> and right. you go a bit forward because we tend to lean back yep. when we don't have enough air. It's not a good thing to do because. Uh, you want to push the air out, so you lean forward. Mm -hmm. It's rare that I say to lean forward, but in this case, you push the air out. Mm -hmm. And then once you don't have any air left, when you take a big breath, like that's a very big breath, mm -hmm. and then you do it again, you push the air out. You do this two, three times. That's very good. Then you can hold a, a note for a long time and just count how much mm -hmm. time you can do it. You can also breathe two in and then breathe three out, two in, six out. Like mm -hmm. we have a video about breathing exercises that's pretty complete. Maybe look at that video. But yeah. uh, also when you play, uh, write your breathing marks in your music. Mm -hmm. That could uh, that can be a big game changer yeah. for a lot of totally, people. Totally, totally. Write mm -hmm. where you're going to breathe yeah. and try to stick to that. You can move them. While you practice, you'll yeah. discover that some of your breathing marks, nah, I don't like it there. Mm -hmm. You can move mm -hmm. them. But the goal has to be to pick something that you're comfortable with and that mm -hmm. you'll stick to. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There you go. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Zark Kent wants to know, em uh, Emily, uh, do you also teach piano in online class? Uh, I know people who say one instrument at a time, but I feel like if anyone is trying to learn to play music, then they should start in the piano. Yeah, you teach online. I uh, teach piano online Yeah, teach online piano online as well. As well. Yep. We have your online studio. Yeah. Yep. And I, I learned two instruments at the at same once. time mm -hmm. and they both helped each other mm -hmm. and my son has learned so many instruments mm -hmm. and right. i think it just made his understanding of music Easier. amazing yeah yeah totally because like because it comes so easily him for like, him like, oh chords like he can hear chords like nothing sure. and piano like he understood how to transpose mm -hmm. and harmony and then like with the trombone he understood yeah. some other stuff and all those things are going to help you no matter what if you learn another instrument there's so many new things you're going to learn that's going to apply to your music ability like you said like it's only gonna upgrade you you know yeah and more. it all depends like if you want to be a virtuoso in one thing and mm -hmm. you want to just focus on that it's good yeah sure if you want to be more versatile and maybe be an arranger and know more about different yeah. instruments it's also good like because music doesn't stop at your instrument you know music is like everywhere yeah. so it's good to be curious about all the music so you're gonna eventually play with somebody else that's another instrument and it's like guaranteed following who you are like we don't need three of the same pe person you nope. know what i mean so exactly following who you are mm -hmm. deep inside like it's gonna bring you probably more joy and more more of um uh your essence mm -hmm. like what what's gonna make you a place yeah you know what i mean exactly yeah. cool hopefully that answers your question if you want to have online lessons with emily just email us at info at the flute channel .com. studio times are uh, still available yeah um what is it we have another two more questions i think two or three more questions i think we'll call it a day it's amazing question so far what etudes do you recommend for playing faster didn't we already recommend a couple etudes but the blue book is a good book for etudes. I like the Cavalli books. Cavalli book, yeah. There's three of them, I think. Yeah, three or four, yeah. They're pretty good. So Cavalli, if you write study yeah. Cavalli, you should yeah. find it online. It's uh, Cavalli is the guy who put them together. Yeah. He's not the composer. He yeah. just put them together and uh, they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, Those are going to help you. Unless find like ones that are like Anderson, and Presto. Yeah, Anderson, Opus 15. When you get... Like he wrote a lot of yeah, studies. Yeah, a lot of stuff that can go fast and very Yeah, like, that's like the other level. Yeah, the other level, yeah. But like it all depends on your level. Yeah, they, like they speed. Will, they yeah. will all help you to play faster totally. eventually, but yeah. it all depends on your level. I love Garibaldi so yeah, much. Yeah, Garibaldi is so good. All the it's true. It's a mignon, you know, yep. the pretty yep. studies. They're so cute and mm. yeah. Uh, we got a couple other. Well, actually, we got a couple more. What do we got here? Uh, okay. How many hours did you practice flute at most i would say five i would say five five was my max with a break with the hour breaks oh, with a not a hour breaks, breaks but 15 minute breaks yeah in between yeah. within a five hour period so like th four break five breaks of 15 minutes is a whole hour so really i only practice four hours <laughs> i think when i was doing my masters i would practice five maybe six but sometimes i wouldn't practice per se but study my music yeah. or other so maybe i went up to six but five hours of playing the flute is yeah. enough uh, for me and i think i would be, be pretty wise to kind of like trans while you're learning in school or while you're learning with the teacher is also like learn to 
play without having to practice those four or five hours beforehand that day. Say you have some type of gig and you don't have time to do stuff. You don't have time to do four hours of practicing. You know, I feel like people kind of when they finish like their schooling and stuff like that and they're out there, they still feel that they have to practice four hours or five hours a day. Just to keep just up. Just to keep up, you know. Yeah. But I would... S- I think at one point, uh, if you have a good level, you don't need to... You you already built that. Yeah. And you can... Um, Apply it maybe more to... Yeah, maybe you don't need to practice that much yeah. every day anymore. Yeah. But yeah, or even when you are building, you should... I feel that sometimes we're taught that you need to warm up every day. If you don't warm up, your sound will be horrible. And I was mm-hmm. like, I played yesterday until 10 p.m. I went to bed. I woke up. Now it's 10 a.m. Right. Did I forget how to play the flute yeah, in 12 hours? Really? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm all for doing sound exercises and mm. all that stuff. But I mean, if you're at a certain level mm-hmm. and you've played flute so many times, like so many hours, you didn't forget how to make mm-hmm. a sound. Mm-hmm. Like, I like to do sound exercises, but if I don't have time, I can still go and record in a professional uh-huh, studio uh-huh, and uh-huh, I won't be uh-huh. nervous. I know right. that. And I think sometimes we block ourselves with those those thoughts that we created out of nowhere. Uh-huh. like, And we've been told that you have to do this. And right. we're just blocking ourselves uh-huh. with those thoughts, yeah. I think. There we go. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, we both agree on ah, that. Thanks for the $50 of the super chat. You can do that too. Oh, thank thanks you so, so much. much. Thank you amazing thank you and then (laughs) julian herrera wants to know what etudes do you recommend for college auditions for example the anderson opus 33 or tefano gobert 24 progressive etudes greeting from greetings from columbia well uh college auditions usually just be sure to check every college is different with their requirements sometimes so find out what etudes are acceptable if they tell you to choose your own etude you know like we were saying uh, research a little bit like there's opus uh, 33 there's a lot of great in the andersons there's two or three really great etudes that are yeah and super it's, it's university to, like i think i was learning them in university yeah. so it's totally fine yeah totally opus. fine yeah that opus but like yeah. pick one or two find out uh online which ones people play the most listen to them then pick uh they often gobert i never really heard many people like use i never that auditions. Heard, i never learned i know them, them but I, they're just like I don't know. They're just eight, I know their I know their technical exercises. Yeah. I don't know those studies, but right. I would like to look at them. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely go through them. Um, what else do we got here? I'm currently Stephen Josh wants to know. Uh, I'm currently shopping for a new flute. I have a silver Brannon and a gold and a gold Powell. Both feel and play similar to me. Do you have any suggestions for finding the one? Okay, well, the one flute, right? So. If you're trying so to find, so you're trying yeah. two flutes, but you don't know which one to buy. Yeah, hmm. I think that's what it is. I think she, they have a silver Brandon and a golden Powell. They don't know. That's their decision points. If, well, well, yeah. Maybe try them with uh, someone else there, mm-hmm. and maybe blindfold yourself yeah. and try them without seeing what it is. Yeah. And if you have someone who knows the flute and can listen and also tell you what they think you sound better on. Maybe Forget. also a person who doesn't see. And then if they do sound the same, then I would take the cheapest. Yeah. <laughs> and I would like record them. I would record. Oh, that's I would record closely. I would record closely. So put the, uh, hopefully you have a good enough microphone because really a cell phone, my cell phone won't really do the job, do its purpose. But if you have a little H1 or something, do it at two different distances, close, close, like about two feet or three feet away. And then one 50 feet away. Or 100 feet away if you can do it like as far as you if can you in the space, room yeah, as far as and can. then listen to, and try to record both the same way the pieces and then listen to them and cycle through them and listen to them throughout a couple of days and then hear what it sounds like far away and frontwards and ask yourself is this what i'm trying to am i am i um which omitting yeah which which one do you prefer and which one am i doing the best on and all that yeah. stuff so but um, if it really sounds the same then I would pick the cheapest. Yeah, one. I'd pick the cheapest. Both are going to be costly, regardless regarding yeah, to yeah, and repairs. Both yeah, yeah, and to repair, which will it will need. No expensive flute will ever not need to be repaired. They need to be repaired. In fact, probably even more. I would argue more than uh, some uh, budget flutes. You know, you have to bring it in every six six months to a year to keep it all in standard. Because as soon as you neglect it for several years, especially gold flutes and like very very high end. Um, flutes 
they're going to wear and degrade and then the repair cost is just going to build and build and build yeah, and then you're going to have to deal with new pieces coming into the like flute, for which sure if you have a more optimal. expensive flute it's more expensive to keep up as well yeah, it's yeah, a bit yeah. like with a car you yeah know? just like with a car so buy a corolla the parts are cheapest than if you buy a mercedes yeah exactly <laughs> But uh, finding the one, like I said, those steps, like recording yourself, how you feel, how it feels on your fingers, all those types of things. And like, yeah, you know, and play like try to play different things. Like yes. Play legato, oh, play yeah. staccato, play high, play low, play yeah. uh, uh, intervals, yeah. big intervals. Like, play, yep. don't play only one type of thing, like yeah. long notes, because like yep. some sometimes uh, tonguing will be easier on on one head joint than on another and all those things. So. Yeah. yeah try to play a little bit of everything yeah. high notes low notes like exactly. everything yeah try D those different articulations different yeah. uh, styles of different styles like of music like baroque romantic modern those are usually the three that flutists play a lot and then a little bit of like classical i would say classical too like just a little extra of each playing one piece that's yeah. one style oh yeah you might find out find out later that oh maybe oh you know. i couldn't play baroque it doesn't sound very good this golden flute on baroque music maybe you know no maybe. you know like, you're like oh no you want to find an all-arounder that can do that you can feel that can do a little bit more but you're not even kind of even there yet you know like it has room for for growth yeah. and stuff so but they're both good flutes oh yeah so it sounds like they're probably be gonna be great flutes either and, way <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and the microphone i don't think you can yeah. make a mistake yeah. with any of them exactly and the microphone test i think i would just consider them like ears right so you, you should treat them like that too when you listen back like and all those things um what do you who do you think is the best flutist who ever lived <laughs> yeah that's, that's a question i don't know best flutist that ever lived i don't know i think there's a a lot of a lot of great flutists that are not necessarily even classical flutists. Like Hubert Laws is a great flutist. I thought I listened to him sometimes, and it's always a good sound to listen to. Like I don't think in music you can. Personally, I don't think in those terms. Like it's yeah. not like who runs the fastest. You know, yeah. it's not. It's not a um, athletic uh, no, endeavor. It's no, an it's artistic not. endeavor. Artistic, yeah. And in an artistic endeavor, there's so much um, subjectivity. Yep. Exactly. Um, one person's sound can uh, really touch you and another one person who won't be touched by the same sound. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many amazing musicians at, mm -hmm. at a certain level that, yeah, I can't really answer that question. <laughs> I can't choose. That's funny. Um, well, we'll do one or two more questions. All pretty great here. Um, Oh, okay, it's about memorization again about uh, Tafano Gobert. My teacher told me I have to memorize the scales and I don't know what to do. How should I memorize? Is there a trick for memorization? There is a trick. Yes. So there's two things. Major scales, is it major or minor or both? I think I'll it's the Tafano Gobert thing. I think it's Tafano Gobert that he's trying to memorize. Okay, first, like, do you know all the orders of sharps and flats and how to find... What's fast what? like yeah. know that a flat major has b flat e yeah. flat a flat and d flat mm. you know do you know that if you don't um well yeah maybe we should make a video about that exactly so there's this part and then for the tafanen and goba um you know you always do the scale from the degree one to degree one because mm. there's seven degrees in a scale like c d e f g a b and then c comes again so eight but eight and one are the same note then when you do in G, you just transpose 1 to 8 on G, you know. So there's 7 degrees and then mm. 1 comes back. So you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. And then you go 2 and then you go back down on to 2. And then you go back up to 3 and you go back down to 3 and you go back up to 4. So try to analyze it like that. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to learn them by there heart. There you go. Yeah. It's always the same uh, motive that's coming back it's the same structure and sequence that comes back mm -hmm. so try to see your scales as a seven degree sequence mm -hmm. that's going to help you a lot mm -hmm. i saw a question just last i think uh and i think i saw a question by starless if you could elaborate about this question and we'll get back to it maybe and that's what about wooden recorder and flute how would that do maybe about the scales and fifths practice if you could just elaborate on that it's a bit scattered but I wanted to roll back onto another question, which was, what is the hardest aspect of flute? I think it's the sound for most people. Yeah. What makes the most difficulty? Sound. Yeah. yeah. 
Because like, even when we do get a, bit, a good sound, before we can say we have a good sound every day, yep. it takes a while. It takes a while. Yeah, sound it's production, tough. it's tough. And it can be a bit like, oh, because they're like, yep. I sounded so good yesterday and I don't anymore. Oh, but that happens all the time. Yeah. It takes, what, 10, 15 years yeah. of good practice to be time. like, oh, I think my flute sounds good every day. Yeah. Took me a long time. Yeah, and all, and I think it's uh, one thing for me a lot is when that was happening. Whenever I was like, "Oh, bad tone day," I would take a fifteen minute break or an hour break and then go back to it, and that usually disappears. Like mm -hmm. the bad tone, it's just like it's like an it's like your brain telling you something. Either I always found out that whenever I had bad tone day, I would have a eureka day just soonly after, mm. and I was always thinking that it's my brain telling me to stop for a second. Like you're having a bad tone day, go take a break, and then when you come back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix something in your head, and you're gonna play something, and you're gonna play well, and then I played well. I had a friend uh, who was studying the trombone mm -hmm. in conservatory, and he said that his teacher, when they had a bad tone day, would make them would be like, okay, it's not good, can you make it worse? Mm -hmm. And That's then he good. would say, how did you make it worse? Mm -hmm. Now do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That can be that can be helpful. Like That's so go, helpful. Go down wow. the rabbit hole, and then once you hit dig deeper, bottom, yeah. hit the hit, <laughs> like, the hit the hit the hit the hit the yeah. ground. Yeah, and also it it kind of dramatizes the bad tone. It's just a bad tone. It's just today. It's not forever. Like we identify so much to things that just happen, and just like take a little step back. It's not a big deal. Go for it, and then you know, worst thing that can happen is. It will this this sound that that's yeah. even worse, and it's not even that horrible. You exactly. survived it, you know. Exactly. In a way, it kind of I like the idea. Yeah. So there we go. Um, yeah, we'll try to do one more question, but before that, just want to let everybody know again: go and check out uh, Musigy. That's where our store is for our digital content, uh, our course, and also some sheet music and stuff like that. So you can go to M O U S m-u-s-o-g-y dot com and that's where you can help us out the second intermediate book is going to be coming out hopefully at the end of september which will be the uh second book to the beginner book which is the 15 lessons for beginners and uh it's gonna be a great book it's gonna be very progressive it starts you right off from where the other book left you yeah and takes you to a new realm of uh learning the flute which is really awesome so that's going to come out at the end of september hopefully we'll have something during the podcast and september podcast will announce uh, yeah, it's out then we're gonna be done by then but we'll uh, see. yeah we'll see yeah and then also you can go to our uh merch store which is our physical physical uh shirts and and mugs, mugs and stuff like that and hats and all those things behind us uh so you can go to our uh, store at teespring.com slash the flu channel or you can go to store dot the flu channel or store dot the flu channel dot com and that's where you can go and buy merch there too and then um we have also our Patreon where you can help us uh, help support us on a monthly basis and be a, a subscriber to that. You can go to patreon.com slash the flu channel and there we will we do different things where you can talk to us there directly and ask us some more detailed questions. It's a more of a friendly space for people who want to support us more. So you can go there and tip us and become a subscriber to the Patreon there. And what else? And if you want to buy a flute, right? If you want yeah, to buy a flute. You can use our code TFC with the Flute Center of New York. You can go on their website, flutesforsale.com, yeah. and it helps us out. And it also gives you some perks. Yeah, and those perks That's are pretty good. great. You can try the flute for longer, up to 10 days, have a longer warranty than the traditional warranty. And you can try more flutes. Yeah, One yeah more try more flute flutes, like. yeah. And it's worldwide, and they have the largest selection of flutes there. And uh, they're all flutes there, so you can even call them and talk to them, and they'll just mention our code, and then they will uh, be able to set you up for a trial. To try out some flutes if you're in the in the in the shopping mood, and a lot of people have already done that, and that's amazing this past year, and that's really helped us out a lot in producing more content for you guys. And then also, if you want to have lessons with Emily, you can email us at info at the flute channel dot com for flute or piano. Yeah, and uh, that's and it all works online. Very well online. And yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's I a lot have, of fun. I have many different people. And it's so interesting to meet people and see how, like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel that I listen to the news and I feel like, what's going on with human beings? And then I meet incredible people, like, that are curious and are, it kind of brings back my love for humanity. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, music's yeah. amazing. Of and it just brings out very good traits of people, I think. And, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Music. Hmm. 
And finally, our last question, we'll pick uh, this one. Flute Rhapsody, I'm addicted to practicing. I'm seriously trying to be like Ling Ling. Well, you got to be like Lung Lung. That's your problem. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to practice eight hours a day and my goal, uh, and it's my goal, but it started to be harmful and uh, for me. So should I force myself? Should I force myself like that? No, you no, shouldn't. You shouldn't. Like, Even if it brings you joy, you shouldn't do that because like, it's not going to bring you joy because no. it's going to bring you a lot of pain. And yeah, like, pain is no, not good. It's not going to bring you joy. <laughs> you're not gi- you're not doing that because it brings you joy. You're doing that because there's this weird mentality that you need to suffer to be an artist. There's those movies where the guy plays until he bleeds and all those things, and uh, I don't subscribe to that at all. Like, I think you can be yeah. serious, you can be disciplined, yeah. and without hurting yourself yeah. if your body's not working anymore you won't be able to play anymore right. and you might not be able to play for years i've known people yeah, who yeah. had to stop music altogether because yeah, yeah. they Same. hurt themselves so much mm-hmm. it was to a point of no return yeah, yeah, yeah. some people continue to play with pain you know what happens their brain cuts off the signal to their yeah, yeah. finger sure, of course. and then yeah. the fingers don't don't move like right. the brain doesn't control them anymore yeah. You can lose control of your fingers yeah. by going in the pain because at one point the brain's like, I can't deal with that pain anymore and it right. shuts off. Yeah. So like respect your body <laughs> yeah. and respect what you're supposed to be as a human being. You need to have connections with others. You need to like, I don't think it's healthy to be by yourself all the time practicing. You need yeah. to have... Yeah connections and see people and or well, talk to people yeah. on the phone mm-hmm. or have chats like that where we're together uh-huh, uh-huh. like anything that and you can still learn so much in three hours a day sure yeah three hours of serious practice mm-hmm. because don't tell me that you can be super focused when you're in pain after seven hours mm-hmm. you might be practicing wrong things and making those wrong habits mm-hmm. even more ingrained mm-hmm. Sometimes practicing more can mm. be can do damage not just to your body but also to your playing because maybe you don't have a good posture anymore because you're tired and then you're just reinforcing mm-hmm. that or maybe you're not focused anymore so you're learning bad notes and you're reinforcing right. the bad sure. notes. So I don't agree with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, it's it's a the philosophy of this thing with the recently with like Ling Ling and practicing a lot. It's a uh, it's, it's a, a good joke. It's but a joke. It's a, it's it's a philosophical joke. It's just something to take uh, lightheartedly because we we want to laugh. It's what's healthy about it is that we laugh about ourselves, and that's good. And um, but the other side of the sword is is really practice is something that's personal. It's something that you should be able to um, be efficient for a couple hours, not much, and that's it. It shouldn't be something that takes over your whole entire life. Um, and also like. Yeah, go and live out your life and stuff like yeah. that. It's and all good. if you do want to put more time, maybe you can analyze your music. You can listen to versions yeah. of things. You can, um, you know, conductors look at their you scores. Can you know, work and on the, your ear training. Yeah. You can work on different aspects of musicality yeah. that don't require your body yeah. to be involved. But also, you need to live a little. And there's in some fact, live a lot more than I think. Live a lot more than the opposite. And yeah. how can you be expressive in your music? <laughs> Music is an expression of emotions and life, and you need to live a little mm-hmm. in order to be able to do that. Like, yeah. 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 I, I believe in a balanced lifestyle. Yeah. And plus, so. like, also, like, there's a lot of science with brain activity and practice and in regards to anything, even just studying, like, a textbook for a class. Like, the brain has a function that can only take so much, and it has a RAM, and it's, like, filled up, and then when you are done you have to go to sleep for it to all kind of register. Like that practice doesn't end at the practice session. It has, it's so important to realize that, that when you're done practicing, there's a thousand other things happening now in the background in your head for the rest of the day. And while you sleep, that's why it's good to have sleep or that practice session has lost. I think people say they lose up to 30% of their recall if they didn't sleep well. And then the next day you won't be as focused. You're yeah. you're gonna learn bad notes. Yeah. You're gonna. You and it's know. a vicious circle. Yeah. And it happens the same thing in the morning. In the morning, if you wake up, then you don't sleep well. You don't have enough uh, capacity to f- be fulfilled 
throughout that whole day again. So it's this vicious circle that you're constantly losing. So make sure so you sleep eight sleep. hours a day, but don't necessarily practice eight hours yeah, a day. Yeah, <laughs> sleep. In fact, yeah, be ling ling and sleeping because like you're practicing, yeah. I guarantee will be way, way better and your playing will be way, way better. There's no yeah. suffering. Like the, there is suffering in, in, in the arts and stuff like that, but it's it's really grandisized. There's too suffering much. in life in and general. And there's suffering in life like, in general. Suffering is part of the human yeah. Uh, yeah. life. Every human being yeah. suffers it's yeah. part of of the the deal yeah. <laughs> of life yeah. but yeah. i don't think we should just aim for more suffering just because we think it's going to bring us something right. else i don't think it it does yeah. but maybe i'm wrong like you know uh, it's only my opinion i yeah, yeah, yeah but that's that you know like i think just uh make your practice sessions happy and pleasant because then that because I've comes seen out people as well too who suffered for nothing oh yeah you know i've, I've known so more I, than that's why i don't other. believe that this suffering will bring you uh, yeah. you know because i've seen more people suffering for nothing yeah that destroy themselves instead of build themselves sure. and like sleep eat well exercise and practice seriously and focused because it's not just about how much how many hours it's really about your mindset are you aware of what you're doing or you're just mindlessly moving your fingers you know without sure. a goal sure yeah uh so yeah well one more final question i think rose here wants to know i have a problem with my flute sound because it vibrates a lot and people can hear it how do you fix that well that must be vibrato i guess right uh, can you repeat that sorry I was no, that's okay hi i have a problem with my flute sound because it vibrates a lot and people can hear it uh if you can help me please okay i would have to see you Sometimes it's the upper lip that just... Uh, some people, it happens, especially in the high register. Mm -hmm. The upper lip starts uh, moving without control. But also maybe it's a vibrato. Maybe it's your throat that's too closed. Maybe you don't have enough air support. It's very difficult. So yeah. It can be different things. Yeah, have a lesson with Emily. Like Email us at info at thefluechannel.com and you can set up a lesson with us and uh, she can analyze it like sometimes in 30 minutes maybe i could figure it out and we yeah 30 uh, minute uh, lesson it. yeah but uh yeah just email us and we'll uh, we can we can talk about that i think that's it i don't see any more maybe there is if we have missed your question i'm sorry but uh, you can also leave th that question again down in the comments and we'll try to answer it on a future video and we do this every uh like i said every last sunday of the month for the food talk podcast and uh if you want to join us over on Patreon, we are going to start a couple little new little series there just for the Patreon. So you can go and subscribe to us there and listen to us and talk to us. See, that's a place where you can talk to us directly faster. Uh, but uh, you can go there at patreon.com slash the food channel because I don't think we recommend I don't think we said the Patreon during the little thing before. Oh, so there we go. So, yeah, thanks, everybody. I, it was an amazing podcast. Thanks so much for the super chat as well. That was amazing. Good yeah, help yeah, as well. Yeah, all, the, so all that stuff goes a long way. And um, be sure to uh, check out all the things we recommended in the description. And also go check out that video by uh, KSI on his second channel where yeah, Emily talks yeah. about the flute, teaches him how to play the flute. Cool. Anyways, see you guys. See you. Thanks for listening. Yay. Bye.